Hey everybody, my name is Carol Rourke and I'm in my favorite place in the world which is the Mississippi Delta and thought y'all might want to see me do a little plain air painting. Hate we can't be together like we normally be for this event but at least we're doing something. Hope y'all enjoy. Hey everybody, so I'm back in my studio. I've done my little plain air piece and back in, out of the gnats, out of the wind. Really wasn't hot, but yeah, sometimes it is. We all know that. So why do we do this? Um, why do we not do this more should be the real question. You know, if you've painted plain air, and I'm sure most all of you have or you wouldn't be watching this, you know firsthand how important it is for the knowledge it gives us to bring back into our studio. Our cameras can only do so much. Yeah, they're a great tool, but they don't capture the shadow nuances that we see with our own eyes. They don't capture the exact colors or the depth we see when we're out on location. There's just no substitute for it. So if you look a little bit at my process, you'll see that I started with a burnt sienna wash, which is somewhat of a grisaille value painting. I like to do that when I have time, meaning pretty much anything but sunsets or sunrises because the time is so fast then, it's just basically get it on there. Um, but I do like, if I've got that two hour window, which is about the most you can have in, on a sunny day, you know, gray days, you get a little more time, but I like to get that value study. So if that light changes, and it will, even in that two hour period, I kind of have an idea of how I want my values to go. So my process is thin to thick, large to small, dark to light. And what that means is I start with a thinner variation of paint. I thin my burnt sienna down with some Gamsol so I can get it on there very fast, have it set up. I like to use Gamblin Fast Matte Burnt Sienna or Griffin Alki Burnt Sienna because it dries so fast. And a lot of times you'll see me wiping, which helps it dry even faster. And from then on, I start to use thicker paint. So that's my thin to thick. So dark to light. You'll notice that I lay those shadows in first. It's easier for me to build the light on top of my shadows, so I like to have that dark base behind it. it just helps me to get to where I want to go a little bit faster. And even before that, I'm thinking about large to small. It's so easy to go out in the field and just get overwhelmed by every leaf on a tree and every board in a barn every chicken in the grass, whatever. But what really matters are those large shapes in relationship to each other. So I try to squint down and really simplify my scene and lay those small, those large shapes in first so that I get a nice composition before I move forward. Now, not always am I going out in the field and thinking about, oh, I've got to get the perfect composition so I can get the perfect painting. A lot of times there's not time for that. A lot of times when I go out in the field, it is just note taking. I'm still thinking about these three things as far as the wash, as far as the large shapes, as far as making sure I put thicker paint over thin paint. But my process may be a little faster. It may be a little bit about, okay, the weather's about to change or the light is about to change. I need to get as much information as I can so that I can take it back in the studio and it's another tool with the photographs. Uh, sometimes I'll use a little, I have a little brown paper sketchbook that my dear friend Pam Locke made for me and Dawn Whitelaw showed us how to do these great little studies on there, which keeps them from being too precious. 
and gives me notes to take back into the studio because these field notes, whether they're the painted on the paper, but also you'll see I'll have a lot of note taking in pencil from little pencil sketches to this color should be this, this color should be that. Whatever I need to get me back into the studio and get the same results that I think I could get when I was on location. Sometimes I'll just take a, a larger painting out and get it started. So I get that layout and that depth that I can't see on the camera. And then that along with maybe some of the smaller color studies and the photographs will help me as I take it back into the studio. You know, we're about to get into winter. Yes, I do go out in the winter. Do I like it? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, it's a different time of year. I actually think the Delta is almost a little prettier in the winter, so that drives me outside. Um, summer is the best time for practicing greens because guess what? That's all we have is green. Um, so the winter time, even though it might get a little brutal every now and then, I've been known to paint in my car. Um, it is a, a time that's different from the rest of the year. The lighting is different. It's just, and, it, and the more you get out throughout the seasons, as far as saying that lighting is different, you'll notice every season has its own type of lighting, which is unique to it. Again, going through photographs, you're probably not going to notice that. So I hope you enjoyed watching me paint a little bit. Um, I hope we're able to get together soon and paint more. Looking so forward to Ocean Springs next year where we can have an event similar to what we had in Laurel last year. And stay safe.